Good morning, Christ Temple, and welcome to our online Sunday morning watch party with Pastor Kenneth Grizzard. Immediately after the watch party, the video will be uploaded to our YouTube page for those who do not have access to social media. Wanted to remind you that there are three ways that you can give your tithes and offering. One is online via PayPal or through our church website. You can also mail your tithes and offering to P.O. Box 60310, North Charleston, South Carolina, 29419. Or you can give it in person on Sundays from 11 a.m. until 12 noon. The sanctuary will be open for giving opportunities only. Now join Pastor Kenneth in our Sunday morning worship already in progress. Thank you all so much for joining us. We just want to go ahead and open up with prayer. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this day, Father. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. And Lord, we render these services into your hand, Father. We ask you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will speak as you will. You will move as you will. Father, we pray, God, that you will say and do something, O oh God, that is life-transforming. God, that we will not be the same after we would have stayed in this place with you, hearing from you, feeding from your table. Father, I ask you in the name of of Jesus. Let your glory be revealed as your name is exalted and praised. It is in Jesus' name that we give you all the honor, praise, and glory. Amen. We are so thankful to be here today and thankful that we serve a God of mercy. A God of love. Hallelujah. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain. Yes. Your love will surely come find us like raging wildfire calling your name God of mercy sweet love of mine yeah I have surrendered to your desire May this offering stretch across the sky. These hallelujah be multiplied. Yes, your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside. We cannot contain Yes, Jesus Your love will Surely come find us Like blazing wildfire Calling my name If you know it, sing it with me Say, God of mercy Love of mine, I have surrendered, I have surrendered to your desire. May this offering stretch across the sky. These hallelujah, these hallelujah, be more. God of mercy, God of mercy, we love of mine. Go ahead and put your hands together. I have surrendered, yes, Jesus, to your desire. May these offerings, 
sing it because we need him right now. Sing Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Sing Oh. Really? 
Lord, how we love you. How we appreciate and adore you. What manner of love is this? That a man would lay down his life for a friend. Lord, we thank you today for the measure of your love. The magnitude of how you love us is beyond comprehension. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for how you've kept us. Thank you for how you've provided for us. Thank you for how you have protected us. Thank you, Lord, for how you've preserved us. Lord, if for nothing else, we say thank you for being who you are. That there is no God beside you none above you, none we can compare unto your likeness. And for that we say thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We love the Lord today. He has been so good to us. He's been so kind and gracious to us to allow us another opportunity just to fellowship together. And we honor the Lord for this privilege and opportunity to be able to stand before you uh, even in a new way, a way that God has given us the ability to still uh, stay together even in the midst of a world uh, epidemic. God is still in control, amen? And so we are grateful for all that he has done and is doing in our lives. I would like to draw your attention to two scriptures today and We'll talk a little bit about that and move out the way. Uh, we're going to start with Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39, and then we'll go to Psalms chapter 23, verse 5. Uh, this scripture uh, and subject came as a result of a conversation uh, with the Lord, uh, just talking to him about what it is he wanted to say to his people, what he wanted to say to this community. And the Lord began to minister to my heart about three things, the cup, the sheep, and the table. Uh, these three things, I know it doesn't sound that exciting, but there's something the Lord wants to get to us today. And as we look here uh, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, it says that he, talking about Jesus, went on a little further and fell face down on the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet, I want your will, not mine. Psalms 23 and verse 5 very familiar passage of scripture and it says that thou preparest a table or a feast for me in the presence of my enemies you welcome me as a guest anointing my head with oil my cup overflows with blessing and so as the Lord began to minister in my heart about these three items the cup the sheep and the table the Lord began to put into perspective the prayer that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. I have a question. Have you ever encountered a process in life or a season in life where you just ask the Lord, can you let this cup pass? Is there any way that you could just allow this thing just to go ahead and be over? Can you give this assignment to somebody else? Can you, can you give me a new family? Maybe I'm the only one that's ever been in a situation or a season where you said, Lord, if you could do anything different, please do it now. And so Jesus is in, he's in this place, he's in this place, and we say Jesus asked God to let this thing pass when he was the son of God, he knew what would happen. Yes, the truth of the matter is, is even though we have a glimpse at the will of God, it does not mean that our soul or our flesh is going to always be in agreement with the process to get there. 
And so Jesus finds himself at a crossroads where he is asking his father. He says, the pain and the anguish of my assignment is heavy. Have you ever been in a season where the pain and the anguish of your assignment was heavy? Lord, have mercy. You called on your friends and they didn't have answers. You called on a preacher and they didn't have time to pray. You called on the intercessors and they were too busy and it was just you and God. Have you ever been in that place where you just had to trust your relationship Jesus is here in the garden of Gethsemane and he's crying out to his father about the assignment and the Bible tells us that he prayed three times if it be your will let this cup pass but he always came to this this resolute that nevertheless not my will your will be done we see that right after this, the Bible tells us that, that, that he, he was betrayed. So, so let's talk about, let's talk about the, the importance of the table. I want to talk about uh, the Last Supper. We understand that in the scripture, the Bible talks about uh, when Jesus sat with his disciples uh, for a Passover feast. And even though we classify it as the Last Supper, we understand that it was not the last meal Jesus actually ate with his disciples. Acts 1 and 4 confirms that. Uh, but it was, it was in fact the last meal that he had before he was entered into the next transition of glory. Um, and so I, I would like to say this. At that table, uh, it took time for that table to be prepared. There were some things that had to be put in position. There were some conditions that had to happen. There were some activities and experiences that Jesus and the disciples had to encounter before they could sit and eat at that table. So the table, the table, the table is symbolic of a time, uh, a, a time that will be set before us. And, and many of us right now are saying, Lord, what is happening in this time? And I'd like to just draw your attention to maybe some things that happened at the turn of the year for you or at the end of last year for you. God uh, has been preparing us for a moment like this. What do you mean he's been preparing us for a moment like this? We don't have enough vaccines. We don't have enough medicine. We don't have a cure for this epidemic that's out here. I'm not talking about the epidemic. I'm talking about the opportunity that is set before us to spend more time with God than what we could have ever imagined. The opportunity to reach God in a new way. The opportunity to desire him in a way that we have not had to desire him before. We are facing something that we have never encountered and it is requiring us to go deeper in our love for God. It is requiring us to go deeper in our prayer life to be able to stay with him the right way. It is requiring us to do more than we have ever done before to seek God like we've never sought him before so that his glory can still be seen in the lives of his people. We have never faced this type of adversity before, but God has been dropping those nuggets in our heart, those still moments in our heart, those worship moments moments in our heart, drawing us closer to himself for us to understand that no matter what comes and no matter what goes, he will remain the consistent thing in our life. So we see that the table, the table, the table, the table here, Jesus uh, prepared the table um, by serving his disciples. This is where the church receives their, their ordinance or the tradition of communion. And anybody that's been in church any length of time has had the opportunity to uh, experience communion. Communion is uh, when we uh, remember the sacrifice that Jesus uh, gave on our behalf. The importance here of this feast is that Jesus, Jesus says to his disciples on the onset of the feast, he says, who is the greater one among you? He says, is it not the one who sits uh, 
at the table. Uh, understand this, Jesus was talking to his disciples. If you can remember in the scripture, Jesus declared unto them, greater works shall ye do. We are called to even uh, accomplish greater things. Um, and so Jesus says to them, are not you going to walk and operate in a greater capacity? And, and Jesus goes on and he said, is it not the one who sits at the table? But he says, I I am among you as one who serves Jesus says I'm the one that's serving the table that's set before you so I want to tell you whenever we encounter a season or a time that seems difficult or challenging I want to encourage you to understand that Jesus is the one serving at the table so no matter what time you encounter understand that God still got it all under control. Uh, the Last Supper was a significant event because it proclaimed a turning point in God's plan for the world. I want to explain to you anytime uh, a table is prepared for us spiritually, it is an example of a turning point being made in our life. Lord, have mercy. I wish somebody would just shout, it's my turning point. This is your turning point right now. I know you're trying to figure out how in the world is this thing going to work together? How in the world is all this supposed to come together? Let me tell you, that ain't what you're supposed to figure out. The thing you're obligated to do is to be faithful and obedient to God. He'll handle the rest. So anytime a table is prepared, I want you to understand it is because it marks a turning point. This is a turning point. Glory to God for us as the body of Christ. This is a turning point for us even in our individual lives. I am convinced Convinced that when we come through and yes we will come through this glory to the Lamb of God we are going to see God in a new way we are going to have experienced him in a new way and in that very same experience glory to God those that God has given us the opportunity and the grace to influence will see him in a new and in a living way and souls will be drawn to him glory to God and so I understand that whatever God allows to happen in our life it is for the glory's sake here it is we talk about the table the table let's let's now begin to transition uh to the sheep god likens us as sheep and he as the good shepherd and so jesus now he prepares the table for his sheep can i just talk about sheep for just a moment sheep sheep Sheep, God compares us to sheep. Sheep are animals that are herding animals. They, they herd together. Um, that's how uh, they're very social. They like to be together. Um, I would say that right now, this is a very challenging time for many of us because we've been told we can't do what we are designed to do, which is to be social. And so many of us are struggling right now with trying to figure out how, how do we keep ourselves uh, entertained and how do we keep ourselves sane? Because for some people, being able to go to work and being able to interact is a distraction from the things that they've been trying not to deal with. And so some of us right now are dealing with high levels of anxiety. But I want to tell you something. God has a way, glory to God, to get us to deal with the things that are stopping us or preventing us from going deeper in him. And so we see here that sheep now, sheep, sheep, they, they, they are herding animals, glory to God. And, and the one thing about sheep is any time that there is an attack, sheep don't separate. Sheep don't scatter. Any time there is a challenge, sheep don't break up and run and hide. Whenever there is an adversary coming to a sheep, the very instinct of the animal is that they herd closer together because their protection, their only safety net is that they remain together. Lord, have mercy. So the Bible likens us as to sheep. Why is that so important? Because sometimes, even even, even when we are hurting and when we are going through, sometimes the enemy will do everything he can to isolate us, cause us to leave from the place of safety. And it is so important that we understand that when we are going through, that is not the time to run and hide. That is the time for us to get closer together, to, to make sure that, that we cover each other. Glory to God. Because here's what you got to 
understand about, about predators. Predators prey on those animals that are left out of the group. Predators prey on those animals that show and display weaknesses. Uh, but with a hurting animal, when there is an animal that has been wounded, when there is an animal that has been hurt, glory to God, if there is a young animal, those animals stay within the middle of the herd so that they are protected from the sight of the enemy. And I want to tell you, this is not the time for you to run and hide. But this is the time, glory to God, for you to connect in prayer with your brothers and sisters so that you can see what God has said manifested in your life. This is not a time to run from the church, but this is a time to glory to God. Make sure you are positioned rightfully where God has called you to be. This is a time where you glory to God. Make sure your yes is sure. Glory to God. And so so as sheep, 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 sheep are, are a prey animal. These are what the predators look for. These are what the predators feed on. And when they face danger, their natural instinct is not is to flee, not to fight. Sheep, sheep don't don't have claws, and 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 sheep don't have have a a, a, a big roar that can scare off an animal, a, a, a predator. What they have to do instinctively is bind together. So what am I saying? Right now we are facing uh, a challenge, and and it is at this very moment that that our instincts are being challenged. What do we do? Do we run and hide? What do we do? We have to come together in the spirit, even though we are only not. We are not allowed to be able to, to be around each other in large groups. Glory to God. We can call on the name of the Lord and we can join together in the spirit. Glory to God. And we can stay connected in our prayers and God will hear us. Glory to God. And so the sheep, the sheep, the sheep, the sheep. Here it is that, that a shepherd, when he is tending his sheep, because sheep have a tendency not to really pay attention to where they are going sometimes and, and how they are feeding and grazing and and because because they are in the fields they are subject to the elements have you ever felt like you were just subject to the elements? You said, Lord, the rain came, then the wind came, and you just didn't even feel like you were protected from, from the things that happened to you in life. Uh, have you ever felt like that? And so the sheep are, are out here, and they are subject to the elements, but the shepherd, glory to God, has a mechanism that will protect the sheep even when the elements come. I'm so glad God has a way, glory to God, to keep and protect and preserve us. Uh, we see uh, in the psalmist that the Bible says that, that he anointed our head with oil. Why is that important? Because the sheep, when they are in the field, there are insects and parasites that will uh, get into the sheep's wool and it will begin to burrow down into their nostrils and into their ears and eventually it finds its way uh, into their brain and it lays eggs and, and those larvae begin to uh, cause the sheep literally uh, to go insane and the sheep begins to bang its head on rocks to try to get relief uh, from the itching and the, the, the irritation from the lice. And so the shepherd realized that if they put oil, glory to God, on the sheep's head, if they put enough oil around its ears, glory to God, that, that the pest, glory to God, the lice, the worms won't be able to grip, glory to God, on the sheep. And so even though the flies may try to land, they'll slide off. I come to tell you that God will anoint you so much so that no matter what plot the enemy has, glory to God, that thing will hit you and slide off. The, the Bible says it like this, no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. God God has a mechanism to keep us. You thought the anointing was there just to make you shine. The anointing is there to protect you. It is the anointing because of the anointing that yokes are destroyed. Glory to God. It is the anointing that God puts on our life that is there to protect protect us from every plot and plan of the enemy. Glory to the Lamb of God. And, and so the sheep here, the sheep, the sheep, the shepherd now puts oil on the sheep's head to protect it from uh, the adversaries, uh, the flies and the lice, so that they don't have an opportunity to burrow into its mind and cause it to go insane. Somebody ought to say, God, I thank you that you kept my mind. Thou will keep you in perfect peace 
face whose mind is stayed on him. If you can just fix your gaze on the Lord, glory to God, he can keep you. He can keep you. He can keep you. So we talk about the table. We talk about the sheep. And now we're going to talk about the cup. I promise we're going somewhere. Just give me a couple of moments. And so the cup, what, what does the cup represent? Jesus was crying out and he said, let this cup pass if it's possible. All of us have a cup. The cup is the experience that we all encounter on this journey called life. All of us have something in our cup. But here's something I want you to understand is that God does not leave us in the midst of our experiences, but he is there the entire time ensuring that his desire for our life remains intact. I know, I know it sounds crazy because some of us have encountered some things that we wouldn't wish on our worst enemies enemies. We have been through things that we just wondered and sometimes still wonder why is it that God allowed this type of thing to enter into our life. But I'm here to tell you that things are not what they appear. I know, I know, I know it looks personal and I know, I know it feels personal because it happened to you or it happened to me. But I come to tell you it really ain't personal. Glory to God. God, God ensured that even, even though you might have went through that thing, his blood covered and kept your entire purpose and destiny intact. That what the enemy thought would destroy you glory to God was simply a testimony of God's ability to keep us through anything glory to God and so the cup represents it represents the experiences that we all will go through there are some experiences Jesus had a cup of suffering we don't want to suffer nobody wants to suffer because suffering ain't fun suffering ain't something that's glamorous nobody likes pain. That's not something that, that, that we, we desire. Glory to God. But it comes with the life. It comes with this life. Uh, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, sin and death entered into the world and it became a part of life. So, so, so here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The cup that, that God has given us. The cup God has given us. There is a mechanism that the cup has that has been given by God himself to ensure that our person purpose and our destiny remains intact no matter what we experience in life. And so I just want to pull your attention to something. When we talk about a cup, if you begin to study ancient history, kings and rulers and wealthy lords all had what they called a cup bearer. The cupbearer's assignment was to make sure that whoever they were serving, that their cup remained full. Uh-huh, that their cup remained full. If we remember the first account uh, was in the book of Genesis when Joseph met a cupbearer in prison uh, and, and he gave him uh, an interpretation of his dream and told him that he would be restored. And he says, when you are restored, remember me. The cupbearer, the cupbearer. So let's, let's just talk about the cupbearer. The cupbearer uh, was an office of a, a high rank. He had a high rank. Uh, he was one who had a duty to serve at the king's table. Uh, he was one uh, who intersected the plots on uh, uh, the, the ruler's life because people uh, would try to uh, get rid of the king or get rid of the ruler. Most, mo most of the time they would try to do it by poisoning them. And so it was the cupbearer's agenda. It was his job to intersect uh, the assignment of death, the intersect, the assassination. The cupbearer had a great responsibility to protect the king in so much much so that before the person he was assigned to serve would even drink uh, what was in the vial, um, the, the cupbearer would have tested it first. He tested it on himself to make sure that the king or whoever he was serving would be preserved, that they would be protected. And so the cupbearer put himself between the plot, glory to God, uh, 
God uh, and the purpose of the individual he was serving. He ensured that their life was still intact. So the cupbearer holds a very, very, very important position uh, in a royal family. He must be the person who guards against that king, that monarch being poisoned. And so I just want to show you something here. The Bible says that at that table, the Passover, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and then he served his disciples. The Bible says that in the same manner, he took the cup. Just say he took the cup. He took the cup and he did the very like manner. He served his disciples. Disciples. Jesus became a type of cup bearer. I'm here to tell you that whatever plot the enemy had, Jesus drank out the cup first. His sacrifice, glory to God, he suffered, bled, and died so that we could have the right to eternal life with God our Father. Jesus became the cup bearer, the very thing that was supposed to be poisonous, the very thing that was supposed to take us out. Jesus sacrificed his life that we would have the opportunity opportunity glory to the lamb of god to be able to walk in the divine blessing of our father and so we see here that david glory to god was precocious in his writing he said thou O god prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy the very thing that was designed to take me out in the presence of my enemy the very thing that everybody knew we would not be able to come from the very thing that was an enemy to my soul the thing that drained my mind the thing that drained my energy the thing that left me emotionally in shambles thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy and then he goes on to say thou has anointed my head with oil even though the enemy had a plot and even though the enemy had a plan and even though the enemy had an agenda even though the enemy had had, had an intention with something that was designed glory to God God anointed us so much so that everything the enemy has tried it won't work glory to the Lamb of God I know they lied on you I know they set you up I understood that they betrayed you but you got to understand anytime a table is present that means betrayal is a part of the process it was at the last supper that Jesus said one of you sitting with me is going to betray me you got to understand this is just the process don't take it personal God's just trying to get glory lord have mercy i wish i could teach it like i want to glory to god you can't take it personal i understand the enemy has an agenda he has a plan glory to god but i come to tell you god said i know the plans that i have for you glory to god no matter what the devil has tried he is already defeated and so and so david he goes on he begins to write prophetically and then he begins to say my cup Glory to God runneth over. Can I just say something to you? See, you got to understand a cup, a cup, a cup is a unit of measure. Glory to God. It only, it can only hold a certain amount. And I come to tell you that even glory to God, if you encounter suffering, it ain't but so much you're going to encounter. Even if you encounter sickness, it ain't but so much you're going to encounter. Even if you encounter loss, it ain't but so much you're going to encounter because there is a measure there is a limit to your suffering good God have mercy there is a limit to your going through glory to God you're your going through and your suffering oh glory to God God it has an expiration date on it glory to God it trouble won't last always in this thing God is going to give you the victory God's going to give you the victory all you got to do is hold on so David goes on to say he says but my cup glory to God he didn't say it was full of suffering. He said, my cup runneth over with blessing. Good God, have mercy. I believe David looked over into the future. Hallelujah. And saw what Jesus would give to his people. Glory to God. He says, he says, I come that you might have life and then have that life more abundantly. I just want to show you. Can I just show you as an example? See, this cup only holds a certain amount. Glory to God. And even though, even though, even though the enemy tried to fill it up with suffering. Glory to God. When Jesus 
suffered, bled, and died. Glory to God. He died that we would have a cup of blessing. Lord, have mercy that no matter what we encountered in life, the blessing of the Lord would overtake us. It ain't but one thing that's ever designed to overtake us, and that's the blessing of the Lord. It ain't what you going through right now, baby. It ain't corona. I don't care what's going on in the world. It does not have the authorization from God to overtake us. Good God, have mercy. The only thing in the word of God that has been authorized to overtake his people is his blessing and David looked into the future and he said my cup glory to God because Jesus is my cup bearer it my cup runneth over see you got to understand anytime God gives you a blessing it's always designed to over overshadow it's always designed to overflow it's always designed to give you more than enough it's always designed to give you more than you could ever ask or think Micah said will a man rob God yet he has robbed me in tithing all but you got to understand if you learn how to give like God told you to give he said I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out just one blessing one that you don't have enough room to receive whatever you going through God's already ordained it to overflow it's gonna overflow in your family it's gonna overflow in your money it's gonna overflow in your marriage all you got to do is hold on God will make a way Hallelujah, out of no way. And I come to tell you that yes, this too, this thing you are encountering has an expiration date on it. What we are dealing with in the world has an expiration date on it. And I come to tell you, don't focus on the pain. Don't focus on the experience of the suffering. Don't focus on the fear that's running rampant in the world. Focus on God's word. He said, in the presence of your enemy, in the presence of the thing that looked like it was going to take you out, I'm going to prepare a table and I'm going to be your personal butler, your cup bearer, and I'm going to take the sting out of what was designed to hurt you and cause it to bless you cause it to cause you to grow advance and increase all we have to do is trust God hold on to his unchanging hand trust him and he will continue to provide now there might be somebody who's listening to me and says preacher I hear you but how how can my cup run over when I'm facing all kind of turmoil. Well, I come to tell you, if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, there is a guarantee in your salvation. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. When you receive him as your Lord and Savior, the leader of your life, he'll give you access to joy unspeakable, full of glory, peace that will surpass your even understanding. It comes from knowing him and the joy of being known by him. You can do that with a simple confession all you have to say is Lord Jesus I surrender my life to you I ask you to forgive me of all my sins I ask you to save me now with your power I believe that you died and rose again for me and right now I receive your salvation. That's all it takes. And then the Holy Ghost, the Father, and the Son all come and make their abode in you. He'll give you direction. He'll give you wisdom on how it is that you ought to live your life. He'll give you understanding and perspective on the experiences you have already encountered. He'll put everything in its proper place. 
and you'll be able to say my cup indeed runneth over David goes on to say surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever that's why Jesus sacrificed his life so that you and I could dwell with our father forever total and complete harmony I'm here to tell you no matter what you're going through no matter how difficult and hard it is God can and will cause all things to work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose he and he alone can take what was meant for evil and turn it into your good he's the one that can prepare a table right in the presence of your enemy he's the one that will bless you in the midst of those that have cursed you to show that his favor is on your life I love you and I pray that you receive the love of Christ today no matter what you're encountering no matter what you're going through God loves you and with a loving kindness right now even right now receive his spiritual embrace let the arms of the Lord just wrap around you right there in your home right there on your job wherever you are just and let the Lord's embrace fill you with his joy and his peace that no matter what happens, no weapon that is formed against you, no weapon that's formed against your family, no weapon that's formed against your body, no weapon that's formed against your mind, no weapon that's formed against your marriage shall be able to prosper. Father, I speak your peace in the, to the home of every person that hears the sound of my voice. I speak your joy, your supernatural joy that gives us strength into the lives of every listener now. Father, I pray that you call your children in this very moment to shine brighter they've ever shined before oh God that someone who does not know you will see our good works and then glorify our father which is in heaven father let someone come to know you that through our going through through our life living Lord let someone see that you are still faithful that you are still a good God Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, those who are bound by any type of pain or sickness, Father, your word declares that your ear is attentive to the cry of the righteous. You said the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So Father, we touch and agree for divine healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for supernatural releasing of your miracle right now into the home of every person that is listening. Father, I speak your shalom peace over them, that there is nothing missing, there is nothing lacking, and there is nothing broken in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for supernatural increase and advancement. God, I thank you that whatever it may appear that they may have lost, God, I pray right now in the name of Shanda Bahura Baha'i, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, Lord, you send open doors in front of them right now. 
that will supersede everything they thought they lost. God, we know you're able to do it. Hallelujah. We trust you to do it. Father, we believe you to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for just staying with us. And we pray that the Lord continue to bless you. We pray that he continue to keep you. And I just want to tell you this. No matter what you encounter, understand that God is still in control. God loves you. And so do I. Please stay with us. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, the Christ Temple Church. If you need to give, you can follow us on PayPal. All the instructions will be listed there on our website. We just love you and we pray God's blessing upon you. Please stay tuned for our announcements. God bless you. Sunday mornings, make sure to call in the conference line for corporate prayer from 9.30 until 10 o'clock a.m. And then switch on over to our Facebook page where you'll be able to view the watch party of our Sunday morning service. Then again on Mondays, another opportunity for us to connect via our conference call line for noonday prayer. On Wednesday nights, conference call prayer begins at 6.45 p.m. And then at 7 o'clock, switch on over to our Facebook and you'll be able to watch party our Wednesday night Bible studies. For additional information, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We will continue to update you as things begin to change. Contact us several different ways. This contact information will be listed on our social media pages and it is available for me to email if you would like a copy of this via email. Just contact me at the church at 843-554-3434. Don't forget you also have the option of contacting your deacon, elder, or help ministry representative of the month. For the month of March, that's Elder Nora Edwards, Elder Rudy Washington, Deacon Titus Wright, and Minister Jaquay Washington. You can also pay your tithes and offering online. There is a video that's available via our social media platforms that instructs you how to go through paying online. If you're not quite comfortable with paying your tithes or offerings online and you really want to go ahead and get it out of your pockets and into the church, the church building will be open for an additional opportunity for you to give on Sunday mornings from 11 a.m. until 12 noon. A representative from our finance department will be at the church to collect your offering or your tithes. If you can prepare your envelopes and just slide it in the box, or they'll also be able to run your cards if you would like to do it that way. Thank you so much, guys, for your patience. And as we continue to comply with the CDC recommendations and our countywide ordinances, we encourage you to stay connected with your brothers and sisters call our seniors check on them make sure they're all right call your brothers and sisters check on them make sure they're in the loop of how we're operating in the meantime make sure you stay covered and stay well christ temple thank you so much for joining us we love you and we pray that God's blessing be upon you in the name of Jesus. We pray that his divine health be upon you, that his peace overshadow you, that his joy overtake you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed.